Hey, what's up, guys? Darkbreaker here. In today's video, <laughs> wait a second. Let me check. <laughs> let me check if it's working. <laughs> yeah, it is. In today's video, we are going um, to read the new patch notes for 5.2 out. I haven't read it myself, and uh, funnily, I was refreshing. I was looking at this website, looking here, and I'm like, where are the patch notes? But this is this. It is on this website instead like it's a scam like i have to go through twitter to find it but anyways 5.2 is bringing out massive massive changes and i hope you guys are excited for it um tomorrow i'm also gonna stream in the evening on twitch uh so i hope you guys are not missing it out we're gonna uh, try to play all uh the adjustments obviously so as you guys can see lisandra is coming out we got the new Baron, the new Heralds, new items, etc. So you guys are in for a treat. I am going to read this all out and we're going to discuss and think about the changes and how they might affect the meta. Make sure to leave a like and write on a comment below, uh, write on the comment below and tell me what you guys think about the patch notes. Uh, what are you guys excited about? What are you guys not excited about? And what I should definitely try out on the new patch. Maybe you guys have some ideas. I'll write down below in the comments. And I will try to maybe play it on stream tomorrow evening. Water of Patch Notes 5.2 The fierce battle between Light and Ruin has finally come to an end. Dispelling the dark miasma hanging over the Summoner's Rift. Ingenious Hextech creations have taken over the battlefield, bringing new possibilities to the new Summoner's Rift as they await discovery. What is the most exciting part of this patch for you? The new champion, the new rift, the new skin line? Let us know. Welcome to patch 5.2. Reminder, content will be released throughout the patch. New, new champions. Lissandra the Ice Witch is coming out. As the reclusive leader of the Frost God, many believe Lissandra is a living saint whose followers bring healing and wisdom to the tribes of Frylord. The truth is perhaps more sinister as she uses her elemental magic to twist the power of true ice into something dark and terrible, entombing or impaling any who would reveal deeper secrets. Indeed, the leg legacy of her past may yet, the may yet be the beginning of the end of Rune Terror. Coming out tonight, so uh, tomorrow we will obviously play the new champion as well. Um, and then let's see what else. Ranked season 14 is coming out, I guess, on Friday. So tomorrow, new patch and Friday, new season. They love to destroy the end season with a new patch. So tomorrow, if you guys are still trying to grind, it might not be the greatest idea because everyone is going to try out all of the new stuff on the of the new patch. And the likelihood of oh, you getting run down is pretty damn high. Oh, yeah, you guys can tell me what's your uh, how did you rank the season? How was season 13 for you? For me, I think I am. Um, I might get Grandmaster tomorrow still. I'm 60% win rates with, um, I don't know, less than 200 games. I think 150, 150 or something. I think I'm like at 27, 28 marks right now. But I, I don't play that much. Ward Pass. The new Ward Pass. Food Spirits Amumu will be available after the patch update. Level up your Ward Pass to level 75. To unlock Ascended Food Spirits Amumu. Okay, no one wants to read all of this. Item build recommendation. Recommendation an item build to your teammates during a game to help them decide on a build that would better suit their team's current needs. Oh yeah, I saw that one. And no one... <laughs> people don't even listen to your macro calls anyway, so this doesn't matter. You can use quick chat to ask your teammates to recommend an item build. QR codes to team up. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Look for party. We have added the I play option to party finder. You can now select the lanes you wish to play as a filter for a list of lobbies that match your preferences. When openly recruiting for specific lobbies, the party leader can set tier and lane requirements for game experience that tailors to their needs better. Edit the search for party button in the lobby for quicker access to party finder. Party finder will remember your previous filter settings each time you enter party finder. Lobbies will be filtered based on your previous settings. No one cares about this, honestly. I mean, I guess it's nice to have, but 
you don't need i mean no one's gonna read all of this right free to play all previous champions will be free to play from july 19th to august 1st who are you most excited to try out events event of winter winter is coming and with it a new event play games and complete missions to win prizes winter is coming guys dun, 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 dun. The event of the winter event begins July 18th. Rift Adventure earn patch tokens by participating in events throughout patch 5.2. The Rift Reborn Challenge explore the ha new hexified Summoner's Rift and complete challenges to win goodies. Okay, now, now exciting. Champion changes. Darius. The most feared Noxus commander has not been able to cleave through his enemies as easily as he had hoped. These changes will sharpen his axe and ready him for battle. Decimate. The damage is getting increased in the early game and in the late game. By? I mean by for every rank. Skating stays the same. Blade of the axe damage is getting increased by 10 at every rank and scaling stays the same. Now for the ultimate, the base damage is getting increased by 25, 25 in the early game, 50 in the mid game and 75 mm. at max rank. I mean, nice to have but nothing too major. I guess this is good for the early game. From 14 to 18 in the early game, is definitely not bad for Darius. Like in the late game, you will not notice the plus four, but in the early game, you will definitely notice the plus four. Garen, we are adjusting some numbers our, around Garen to make uh, sure he's in line with his peers. Base HP is getting lowered by 20. Health region is getting nerfed in the early game, but the scaling is getting buffed by 0.1 per level. First ability cooldown is getting Increased in the early game, load in the late game. Duration of the silence is getting decreased in the early game and uh, increased in the late game. And damage reduction is getting nerfed from 80 to 70. I would say overall it's... Uh, they're trying to make late game Garen stronger but uh, his early game weaker. I mean, I guess... I guess that's okay to be fair. Garen is pretty strong. Callista, some um, optimizations. Optimize the mechanic where Rand goes into cooldown when Callista takes down the target with it. Optimize the timer displayed at the indicator bar when Callista is tethered to her ally. Optimize the display of the health threshold where Callista executes enemy champions with Rand. Maokai, another nerf we cheered. Base HP getting nerfed, magic resistance per level is getting nerfed. Brumble Smash, first ability. The late game damage is getting nerfed, and the HP scaling of the opponent is also getting nerfed. I mean, this is his main damage tool, so this is a pretty big nerf. And this is obviously also gonna hurt him. Less base HP, I mean, he still is gonna be very good. He might not be got tier right now like he is uh, right now, but he is probably still going to be a very strong S plus S tier. Maybe still S plus, honestly. I don't think the nerf are uh, that big. 1% per level. Base stats stay the same in the early game almost. Late game kind of nerf. And then early game HP nerf. Stepping hurt him a bit. And then magic resistance in the late game. Not for Riven. First ability cooldown is getting lowered by one second, and ultimate bonus attack damage ratio is getting increased by five percent. Actually, pretty solid buff uh, for Riven. Not gonna lie, this is honestly not a bad buff at all. Especially this. This is gonna give you a lot more attack damage in at the in late game. That's it for balance changes. That's it. It's five champions. It's five champions, guys. Yeah, it's five champions. And Kalista, we can't even count. Lol. Aaron changes skip. Arena changes skip. Gameplay changes. Okay, now now we now in for some. Now in for some treat.
Exec innovations join the fray in the rift. We are bringing fresh challenges to the battlefield in the form of new Hexec Rift Herald and a Hexify Baron Nasher. After slaying Baron Nasher, T Hex Mecha will drop at your team's fountain. Mount the T Hex Mecha, rally your teammates, and get ready to lead a concerted charge toward the enemy nexus. Hexgate. Added a hex gate at each of the four jungle areas of the Summoner's Rift. After the 430 mark, players can use the pair of hex gates in the team halves of the map to teleport from one gate to, a, uh, to the other. After use, hex gate will go on a cooldown for 40 seconds. This will make teleport not mandatory anymore for split pushers, by the way, and also for bot laners to rotate or the support to rotate to the Herald will make it easier. This is a pretty big change. Split pushers can join team fights way easier, or like Baroniners can use the hex gate to join from blue buff to the bot lane and vice versa. So this is a very very big mechanic in terms of rotating and roaming on the map uh, for everyone. A very very big mechanic, honestly. Hextech Toolkit. During the early game, from the 110 mark to the 8 mark, while both teams' outer turrets have not been destroyed, a Hextech Toolkit will periodically spawn in each lane where the minion waves meet. If the minion waves do not meet, then it will spawn at another location that is relatively fair to both teams. Hextech Toolkit can be claimed by either team. It lasts for 50 seconds after it spawns and will disappear if it is not opened. Picking it up grants a random single use active Hextech tool. If not used within 45 seconds, the tool will automatically expire. Super reactive regions. Consume the super reactive region. You can now change to a random size and gain the corresponding buff. Shrink. You reduce size by 30% and increase movement speed by 30% uh, 30 for 7 seconds. Enlarge. Increase the size by 35%, dealing 15% more damage for 7 seconds. Minion Disposal Unit instantly kill minion targets, gaining bonus gold and bonus experience. Hexec Tracker Summon two Hexec Trackers to pursue a nearby enemy champions. On contact, the champions revealed and slowed by 30% for up to 5 seconds. Based on the distance traveled during Pursue, Hextech Mood mod Module Use the Hextech mo uh, Mood Module to motivate your teammates. All allied champions gain a small amount of gold and after 3 seconds restore 15% of their missing health. Siege Cannon Set up a Siege Cannon that can fire 3 cannonballs at turrets. Each cannonball deals 2 damage to equal to 7% of the turret's max HP. This is actually pretty good for sieging with a demolish for example exploding puppets summon ex summon an exploding puppet that lasts up to 60 seconds when the puppet is killed by enemies or expires it detonates in a small area dealing magic damage to nearby enemies deceleration ray place a laser transmitter that shoots out a ray after a short delay dealing 80 magic damage and slowing enemy champions hit by 30 percent for two seconds i'm just reading what's the best Oh, this is pretty good uh, for tracking, I guess. This is really good for sieging. Imagine you have the... What's it called? The Scorpion in the Baron lane in combination with this and um, in combination with uh, Demolish. Really good for sieging. Otherwise, I think this is the best. This giving you more size and doing more damage seems pretty damn good. Rift Creatures, a new random neutral epic monster, either the Hextech Guerrilla Turret or Hextech Mimic, will spawn at the original location of the Rift Herods 5 minutes into the game. So for the Hextech Guerrilla Turret, single target range attacks that cannot be dodged. Apex Laser Cannon, the Hextech Guerrilla Turret condenses a beam and charges for a short period before firing a laser beam that deals physical damage to enemies in a line. Imprecise Strike Missiles. The Hextech Guerrilla Turret locks onto an enemy and fires 6 cannonballs around their location. The bombardment deals physical damage. Take a reward. Destroy the Hexagorilla Guerrilla Turret to be able to summon it anywhere on the map. Once summoned, the Hexagorilla Guerrilla Turret will move uh, toward the enemy uh, to the nearest minion wave and attack on seeing enemy minions. The Hexagorilla Guerrilla Turret preferentially targets enemy turrets over enemy champions. 
The Hexic Guerrilla Turret has a maximum of 100 energy, which begins to deplete the moment it is summoned. Engaging turrets cost 6 energy every, seconds, every second, while attacking other units or being outside of combat consumes 1 energy every second. The Hexic Guerrilla Turret self-destructs once all energy is depleted or when its health falls to zero. Now for the Hexic uh, Mimic. So this was the first Herald, Guerrilla Turret, and now for the Hexic Mimic. Single target attacks that cannot be dodged. So it's going to be very much uh, like... I tried doing the Herald at level 5 alone, and you definitely need allies, because otherwise it will take way more time and it's not as easily kiteable. Plus you can proc the eye to kill it faster, so it, it will require more teamwork to secure the, uh, secure the herald right now. Mimic Leap. The Hextech Mimic leaps up and slams onto the ground, knocking back and dealing physical damage to enemies while becoming, becoming stunned itself. Mimic Charge. The Hextech Mimic dashes forward, charging into enemies and dealing physical damage repeating three times. Takedown Reward. Destroy the Hextech Mimic to gain three micro mimics that follow you around. The Hextech uh, Mimic will spawn Hextech Mimic cores behind outer turrets. Cores despawn after 4 minutes. Standing near a Hextech Mimic core will briefly spawn 3 Micro Mimics that follow you around. The next time you approach an enemy turret, the, the Micro Mimics will dash forward the turret and detonate themselves to do damage to the turret. You will not be able to activate the Hexic Mimic course if you already have mi Micro Mimics following you around. Micro Mimics follow you around for 4 minutes and will disappear if they fail to launch an attack before the time is up. So when you kill it, you get like these Hextech Mimics next to your turret. You take them and then you have like these little orbs around you and when you're close to turret, you will... they will... <laughs> shoot or flow towards the turret and deal damage so, so this is like a mini mini herald for every lane so will help at every lane to uh, damage the turrets that's how this herald works you will most likely not secure one turret immediately like a herald charge but everyone is going to do additional damage to the turret for free and securing some platings Baron Nasher. Baron Nasher has undergone hexification and gains new abilities. Slaying it also grants new rewards. Baron Nasher spawns for the first time 12 minutes into the game and respawns every 3.5 uh, minutes after each time he is slain. Slaying ba Baron Nasher grants the hand of Baron buff that boosts the attack damage and ability power of all allied champions and reduces, uh, reduces recall time. Slaying Baron Nasher strength Oh uh, god. Strengthens the cannon minions in your next minion wave. Slaying Baron Asher drops a T-Hex mecha at your nexus. Attack. Uh, attack the nearest unit and reduces the movement speed and damage. Hexic pulse. Emits a pulse that radiates, ra radiates outward dealing damage and reducing armor and magic resistance. Hexic plasma. Spits out three balls of plasma, slowing and dealing damage to enemies in the area where they land. Hexic Ray. Charges briefly before shooting for three rays, uh, dealing considerable damage to enemies hit. Tentacle Spikes. Erects a spike behind him, dealing damage and slowing nearby enemies in a cone. So, these are the abilities of the Baron Nash, basically. And now for what you can do while you have the T-Hex Mecha. Slaying Baron Nasha drops a T-Hex Mecha at your fountain. I think you guys already saw the clip uh, or the yeah the clips or the video or the preview on YouTube already. Players can stand on the hex uh, on the T-Hex Mecha to mount and pilot it. Champions can pilot the T-Hex Mecha by standing on it for two seconds. The T-Hex Mecha has its own abilities and health stats. Once its health health fall, uh, falls to zero or when the hand of baron buff expires the t-hex mecha ejects you from the cockpit and disappears your perspective is elevated when piloting the t-hex mecha and your movement speeds also become slower 
While enemy debuffs and ally buffs do not affect the, uh, affect the T-Hex mecha, the damage it takes as a percentage, uh, percentage of itself is reduced. The T-Hex mecha deals less damage to neutral monsters. Enemies have vision on you while you pilot the T-Hex mecha. The T-Hex mecha can empower nearby minions, granting them damage reduction and increasing the attack damage. Attack fires a barrage of Gatling shots. Missile Blitz charges up and after delay bombards in a circular area dealing varying degrees of damage to champions, monsters and structures. Amplifying Field grants movement speed, ship boss. Oh, imagine you get the Baron and then the random inting support or ADC t takes the T-Hex mecha. Oh, I swear to God. Iron Tail Sweep sweeps the tails forward in a cone, knocking back enemies. Laser Ray charges and fires the ray, can move slowly while casting this ability. Cooldown applies. Emergency Evacuation. When the T-Hex mecha health falls below a certain percentage, the pilot can choose to dismount. Baron Pit and Terrain Changes. Hex Evacuation reaches the Baron Pit and its surrounding terrain. The region also changes as random neutral epic monsters spawn. Hexification of monsters and the camps. The hex hex star has been applied to non-epic monsters and the camps or brand new aesthetic. This hexification of non-epic monsters does not affect their combat mechanics or stats. Tyrrells, damage reduction of anti-backdoor protection mechanics. Tyrrells, damage reduction get increased, same for Nexus. Damn, that's actually crazy. Damage amplification of Tyrrells attacking champions. Up to 5 stacks now. Maximum damage amplification 262 300. Turret diving is becoming way harder now as well. Inhibitor turret stats, more HP, more resistance. Nexus HP also increase and shield also increase, dude. 8000 total HP if you want to kill the Nexus before 17 minutes. That's crazy. Extali Scorpion added a minimap cool counter and icon for. Oh, yes, I needed this! Count on an icon for the Extali Scorpion. Perfect. I love this. Added a VFX for when the champion cannot summon. Why? Why do I? Why FX? Okay, now my English was just broken right now. <laughs> Fix the issue where the Extali Scorpion and Hexacarrier turret disrupts the movement speed boost on the base for players. Now for the new items. Thunder Sky. Base stats, 3000 3, gold, 40 attack damage, 15 ability ace, 300 HP. And for the passive, the first attack against an enemy champion critically strikes, dealing dealing 160% damage and then restoring HP. Equal to 140% of base attack damage plus 6% of missing health to you. This is so good for bruises, by the way. It critically strikes? Damn, this sounds nasty. And you're healing. When you're low level, you're healing even more. This can be good for so many bruisers, especially if they benefit from being low life. The lower you are, the more... Olaf! Isn't this, like, very good for Olaf? You do damage, you heal yourself, and the more HP you're missing, the more you're healing yourself as well. And the stats are really good as well. Could be good for a lot of bruisers. Maybe even Darius. Darius with the return, Riven can run it, Sinchao can run it, what else? I mean, I guess Wukong could run it, I mean every bruiser can run it. Eclipse. Attack damage, ability haste. Hitting an enemy champion with two separate attacks or abilities within 1.8 seconds deals bonus physical damage equal to 6% of the target's max HP and grants you a shield that absorbs damage equal to 160 plus 40% bonus attack damage. This is a perfect item against tanks, by the way. The more... HP they have, the more healing you will get. Wait, the more damage you will do and the more shielding you will get, sorry. And you need two ad separate attacks or abilities within 1.8 seconds. You can proc it very easily. Oh, this is like the combination with Divine Sandra. 
Divine Sundra and this item are the perfect counter against tanks now. And we kind of have like a tank meta to be fair. Eclipse, new counter. I could, I could imagine you running this build with Divine Sundra and you're just absolutely destroying every single tank. Because you get so much healing and shielding, the more HP the opponent have. Divine Sundra gives you more HP uh, the or more healing the more HP the opponent have and you do more damage. And this will also do more damage the more HP they have and you're getting shielding uh, based. Mm. And you're getting shielding. I'm sorry, my bad. I mean, it skates with your attack damage, dude. dude um, I insert this because I said it skates with the HP, right? It skates with your with your attack damage, but still, I mean, it still does a lot of damage based on the maximum HP of the opponent. Six percent of the target's max HP is so much, and you're getting what's the cooldown? Six seconds cooldown. You're getting 160 plus 40 percent bonus attack damage. Imagine, oh guys, Riven. Riven can proc this so easily and she will get so much um she will get so much shielding bonus attack damage and her ultimate gives a bonus attack damage as well in late game you will have so much shielding and sustain imagine like i don't understand a black cleaver divine sundra build and you get this item as well and death dance as well and then maybe you get this item as well in combination with death dance and you have infinite healing shielding whatever Sustain forever. That's pretty that's pretty insane by the way. Psychic projector. HP, ability power, magic penetration, 15 ability haste. Gain ability power to 4% of bonus HP up to 60 ability power can be gained this way. Projection when taking when taking champion damage, gain a non-stacking shield that absorbs damage equal to 30 plus 10 percent of ability power plus 5% of bonus health for 3 seconds. This is really good for Tank Raggers, Tank Raggers, Maokai, Nunu, every AP, every every AP champion that is tanky, or every tanky champion that has AP scaling as well. Nunu can run it, Maokai can run it. Uh, Singed, Singed can run this too, uh, too. What else is there? Swain, Swain can run this as well. It's pretty good, honestly. This is really good for the Bruiser type, like Bruiser AP tanky champions. Very good. Actually, insane item. Ravenous Hydra. Oh, wait. Enchantment price 500 gold. Deal adaptive damage. 100 of attack damage plus 30% of repair to nearby enemies and restore health by 15% of damage dealt. Deals 50% damage to minions and monsters. Six seconds. This is that enchantment. Yeah, I know this is like the it's not the full item though. It's an enchantment. Ravenous Crescent. And Ent enchantment prize. It's an enchantment on the boots. With the six seconds cooldown. Huh? Isn't this like insane for Renekton, who was running this shit? Renekton, Darius. You can jump in right, you activate this, and you will do 100% of attack damage, and you heal yourself. Isn't this insane for Bruisers? This is Titanic, this is Ravenous Hydra, but as enchantment, this effect as enchantment. Cooldown is normally. Ten seconds. I mean, this is like the AOE, but it's like one cleave every six seconds healing you additionally. Removed items, returning items. Oh yeah, they just adjusted this. This doesn't matter. Plated steel caps. Uh, nerfing. They nerfing it in the early game. Same for Macri threats. Rune changes. Hackstack flash traption. Cooldown. Is getting increased and the units you can flash are also getting decreased. Pretty big nerf. System optimizations. Champion scores changes. Lower the cap on champion score obtainable in ranked and increases the cap on champion score obtainable in legendary ranked. 
Added, leg added legendary rank factor and master of versatility levels. Legendary rank optimizations. Player with outstanding performance in games will earn a small number of bonus points. Rift Guide interface changes. Optimize the Rift Guide's display and uh, UX to improve readability and functional functionality and introduce, introduce Battlefield mechanics to new players in a way that is easier to understand. Update the Rift Guide with content about new Battlefield mechanics. Baron Lane map changes. The Xtali Scorpion, Cannon Minions, Dragon Soul mechanics, the Ice Dragon and Hexic related adjustments. Optimize access to the Rift Guide and display of the portal leading to it. Tutorial optimizations, honestly, oh dude, I don't want to read this out, it's too much. Who cares about tutorials? You guys are advanced watching my guides already, right? Flash combo optimizations. Prioritize flashing in the direction of movement for an enemy champion as a target. Pre-game communication optimizations. Added an emote button to allow you and your teammates to easily showcase your personalities. If you like the skin that your teammate is using, tap on them and let them know. There's no need to be stingy with compliments. Purchase of Renation Story Chapters. The story of Callista Spear of the Argent th uh, Throne may have ended, but if you haven't unlocked all the chapters, don't worry. You can still purchase and read them in patch collections. Story chapters will uh, be available for purchasing starting in August 20, uh, 2024. New Garen skin, new Lissandra skin, new Marfet skin, Seraphine, Tristana, and Mertha gets a Chroma skin. Are you serious? Amumu new skin, Jay's new skin. Honestly, I, I don't think the skins are... Hmm. The skins are not that dope, honestly. <laughs> the skins are honestly not that dope. But yeah, that's gonna be it for the patch notes. It was very long. What can we say? New items are insane. We need to try out Revenant's Hydra. I feel like this item might be insane. Like, this is Bruiser patch. Bruiser patch. This is the patch of bruisers. Riven got buffed as well and Darius got buffed. So I will probably make content for these two first. Riven, Darius content and otherwise I will try to make uh, the new items. If you guys have some ideas write it down below in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was very long. You kind of noticed I felt like kind of tired in the end reading all this out. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.